Dr. Joe show with an amazing guest, Dr. Marks, and you are going to want to hear more about this. Yeah. He it's, did some mind-numbing stuff in that last segment right there. Yeah, so we, we, we ended off that segment talking about what would happen if we stopped at that bunt hit. And so let's let's go back over some of this because there was a lot of information, a lot of some technical terms that people might not completely understand, but, but let's let's go back to the basics. What is Alzheimer's? Well, once you know, tell me and we'll go to Stockholm. There we go. Uh, the current hypothesis, and to emphasize, it's a hypothesis, meaning that it is a reasonable description, but without complete proof, uh, is that there is an abnormal amount of this protein in the brain called beta amyloid that is associated with people who either have or are developing Alzheimer's. The ways of measuring it are somewhat difficult. Mm -hmm. I, w I want people just to understand what protein is because we're not talking yeah. about like steaks in your brain. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's hard when... Uh, this is a radio sh show and I'm trying to get some basic information out there. Right. It's so hard because these are all long discussions. Right, I mean, right. if someone needs to understand what a protein is, in and of itself, that's a significant that's true, discussion. That's true, that's true. But, but in essence, the, the proteins are sort of like the little machines in our body that get things done and, and tell parts of our cell to do other things. And then there's this, this protein called amyloid. And what happens to that one that may result in people having memory difficulty? So we think it's the trigger. Sort of, if you think of it as a gun, the trigger is the amyloid, and the bullets are another protein called tau protein. Tau. T-A-U. T-A-U, the Greek letter tau. That's right. where it comes from. Uh, amyloid is a Greek term for starchy, and it has to do with 150 years ago when they used to stain cells. It, it, it had starch-like characteristics. Yeah. Cool. But anyway, uh, I mean, each of these terms has its own sort of interesting medical history. Right. But... The uh, tau protein, if you think of the old cartoon, the Jetsons, uh, yep. and for those of us old enough and for those of us otherwise, there's Nickelodeon or whatever is the current dun, way. Dun, da, da. Anyway, there was these tubes where they would go uh, racing through space, and they were held up by little girders. Well, if you think of the little girders as tau protein. Okay. So you have these microtubules akin to the Jetsons tubes. Right. Micro meaning little tubes. Little tubes. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, can't see them. They're way beyond, way below our ability to see them. Huh. And the products that the cells need to talk to each other, called neurotransmitters, are transported up and down. The food from one end of the cell to the other is moved down. The garbage is moved in and out. So, so cool. once the microtubules fail, as the tau protein pulls away, because they get polluted with little side chains on them that cause them to fall off the microtubules, then they they clump together. It's called an aggregation and then they poison the next cell in the connection of the network of the nerve cells. And so the idea is that if you can prevent the amyloid from triggering, the, the excessive amyloid from triggering the next step of tau falling apart, which actually destroys the cells and is the basis for the cell death, it's more complicated than that, but for purposes right now that's sufficient, that if you could prevent that further step, then you can prevent the disease from progressing. So how do you do that? That's the... How do you do that? That's Can the we have Nobel the that? Prize question right there, Mark Stiles. Exactly. So there is... there. The, the focus has been to get rid of the amyloid for a long time. In other words, put trigger locks, if you will. Yeah. The problem is if the six-shooter has been fired four times, putting a trigger lock may have a limited benefit in terms of the remaining two bullets. Right. So we've sort of proven that getting rid of the amyloid too late in the disease, which is not necessarily advanced disease in terms of how people are operating, but uh, biologically what their brains look like, um, is it, it just doesn't work. So, so we, once it's unhinged, it's Well, once late. the trigger is fired, yeah. then it's too late. So the idea is to try to block the triggers earlier and earlier. So this drug that was just approved, think of it as a trigger lock for people who have mild symptoms of dementia yeah. and mild cognitive impairment, which I'm going to come back to in just a moment. Okay. So uh, the next step is to look at people who have a high amount of amyloid, which they may have for 10 to 20 years before they have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. And to find those people, particularly where there's families with a lot of Alzheimer's because they cluster for reasons that are complex, 
And the idea is to try to give those anti-amyloid vaccines to get rid of the amyloid in people who are pre-symptomatic, no symptoms. So that's the next step of what we're looking at. In addition, people are saying we've played out the amyloid hypothesis well enough and what we need to do is start looking at things that block tau. So even if the triggers are pulled, can we block the bullets from doing further damage? Mm. So that's you, you, the basis you, you of things. You use the phrase anti-vaccination. Yeah. Yes, why do, why do yes. you call it that? Yeah, it's, it's somewhat of a misnomer. Uh, a vaccine is really a way, as we usually mean vaccine, it's a way of training our immune system to recognize foreign proteins such as virus capsules with, co uh, with COVID uh, to be hyper responsive when they see those proteins and, and destroy them. Uh, in, in the case of Alzheimer's vaccines, it's a little different. These are passive monoclonal antibodies. What that means is in a test tube, they create antibodies against the amyloid protein. And then they give you an infusion, an IV infusion, so that you get a large dose of these um, antibodies. And they grab onto the amyloid, trigger your own immune system to start chewing it up because when an antibody grabs onto something, mm -hmm. that's a signal for your immune system to come in, the goon squad to come right. in and wipe it out. Right, do all sorts of things and, and basically eat it up with these right. giant macrophages, macro large phage eaters, that's right. Right. So, so we are now looking at, at modulating an immune response to prevent or at least treat Alzheimer's? Yes. Uh, proactively. Proactively. It's, it's, uh, you're using the immune system uh, in, in a controlled manner. Uh, I don't think the emphasis is so much on that. That's pretty straightforward. It mm -hmm. has to do with picking the right antibodies yeah. and at the right time. But I want to go back to something. Uh, look, the, the problem with Alzheimer's right now, uh, among many, but is, is acceptance that it exists among the general population, uh, acceptance by primary care doctors to even look for it. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why that's not happening, which I'll go into in a moment, but um, Alzheimer's disease and dementia are not the same thing. Very important for folks to understand this. Dementia is simply a functional description. It means that you have a brain which is not working well enough that you cannot function independently in ordinary life, mm -hmm. in your usual life pursuits. You can get dementia from multiple head injuries, multiple strokes, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis. There's a huge list of causes of dementia. It just means you can't function autonomously anymore. So, de so dementia is the description of a symptom, like a cough, right. but it doesn't tell you why you're coughing Correct. or why you have dementia. This is just the symptom. It's a description. Right. A description. It's a description of function. Right. Now, Alzheimer's is by far and away the most common cause of dementia in the United States for people who are elderly, but is by no means the only one. Now, before you get dementia, you also can have what's called mild cognitive impairment, MCI, not to be confused with the prison system. <laughs> and <laughs> MCI means that you are not the way you were, but you are not bad enough to where you can't function autonomously anymore. So that varies on what you did. If a college professor suddenly can't figure out how to give lectures, but they're still able to manage their affairs at home, technically, they have mild cognitive impairment because they can't do their usual function. Mm. So it's a bit murky, but it has to do with your baseline level of function, whether or not you can, you've lost that or not. So, so I've heard that college professors who have that, they, they've lost their faculties. They have, sorry. they have, they have. No, that's the dean, I'm sorry. Yeah, can, can I ask I, you a I'm, question? Uh, Sure. I, I, I'm a big fan of being proactive, proactive medicine, That's proactive right. law, everything. Do it in advance and you'll be happy. You said something about 20, 30 years. Is there a blood test or something that people can take to understand where they are with these beta amyloids? Yes, uh, that's a very hot topic right now. Um, the um, There are blood tests that are being developed. There's one that's FDA approved. It's about $1,100, um, uh, not cheap. And uh, we're but worth it if you find out that you have it and you can and if you have a treatment off, right? see until June 7th it was like well that's nice but what are we gonna do about it right now you have to validate what that means is that you have a gold standard of, of what everybody agrees is a positive test and yeah. you have to compare new tests to that to see if it's equally valid well that's science right you're always exactly. making it better so we're working on the validation when i say we i mean thousands of people right. are working on the validation of new blood markers and it may be that the blood markers are a screen that your primary care physician can do and then if it's positive then it get re gets referred further on to specialists to try to deal with this 
Now, that's part of the problem, is that there's just not enough specialists to deal with this. Yeah. Uh, the population of Alzheimer's patients in the U.S. is estimated it's approaching 6 million. It's around 5 million now. Hmm. There's only hundreds to a couple thousand neurologists who are trained in neurobehavioral technique to serve all that. You do the math. And so how do we make this screening occur, and then how do we take care of all these folks? The determination and the nuance of treating folks uh, with these newer classes of agents that can alter the disease course are complicated and uh yeah yeah it's complicated i tell you what one of the things that we're fortunate is not that complicated is when we have to take a commercial break and so we will do that so our sponsors can tell us a little bit more about themselves before i forget uh certainly said that okay let's take a break stretch the canvas brush with madness is it sadness or just a show that 